Epidorus. When the contemporary visitor approaches the Epidaurus Valley as he comes from the public road, he can sense he is arriving at a sacred area. Master of the valley and the healing sanctuary of particular popularity in antiquity was the god Asclepius, on whom mortals entrusted their hopes. The mountain forming the southeastern boundary of the Epidaurus Asclepian Valley was called Kinortian in antiquity. On the Kinortian summit, worship began at the latest during the Mycenaean era, circa 1500 BC. The sanctuary that was established and developed there accepted offerings up to the end of the Mycenaean era in 1100 BC. We do not know exactly what happened after the Mycenaean world collapsed. It does, however, seem that the location sanctity was not forgotten during the difficult years that followed, and despite the lack of care, some pilgrims maintained the sacred tradition with offerings that left no trace. During the same time, in the Mycenaean era, namely from 1550 to 1200 BC, it seems that the male divine element present in the worship on Kinortian, an element that was definitely there along with the feminine, albeit downgraded, became more pronounced and was identified with Apollo Maleatis, who inherited local prehistoric characteristics with his surname. We encounter the names Maleas, Maleatas, Maleatis throughout the Eastern Peloponnese. Already in the 6th century BC, a new center of worship was established below the Kinortian sanctuary, on the plain exactly to its southeast. Here were worshipped together Apollo Maleatus and his son Asclepius, who was an underworld divine power who drew his powers from the earth, quickly became the main healing divinity. Worship in Epidaurus, however, never forgot its beginnings and the two sanctuaries, that of Apollo Maleatus on Kinortian and that of Asclepius in the plain next to it were open until the end of antiquity as one sacred facility, as the sanctuary to Apollo Maleatus and Asclepius, shown in inscriptions. The worship ritual required of the patient to make a sacrifice to Apollo Maleatus before applying to Asclepius.
The healing of a patient by a serpent is inscribed on the first stele of miracles of both Apollo and Asclepius. It was found on the east side of the upper Avaton gallery, an area designated for patients to wait for their turn at incubation where they could read it. The stele dates from circa 350-300 BC and the story of healing told is as follows. One of the visitors flooding the sanctuary of Asclepius in Epidaurus had his toe healed by a serpent. His condition was very serious as he was suffering from a malignant ulcer on his toe. One day, he fell asleep in his seat, and then one of the gods' sacred serpents slithered outside the Avaton, approached him, and licked his aching foot with its tongue. Once its mission was completed, the serpent returned to the Avaton. As soon as the man was awake, he realized that he was healed and announced that he had seen the following dream while sleeping. He thought he had seen a handsome young man come up to him and put some medication on the wounded part of his toe. The patient's healing was recorded by the priests on a stone plaque that was put up in the sacred area of the Asclepion in praise of the god Asclepius. This miracle can be explained as medical treatment of the affected area. The involvement of the sacred serpent in healing the toe points to the god's active presence so that the interpretation of the treatment would acquire an unworldly dimension. In the plain, the area where the great sanctuary of Asclepius flourished, there are indications that man has been present there since the prehistoric years. There are also indications that worship in the central area of the Asclepian possibly began in the early Hellenic years, namely from the 8th to the 7th century BC. The one thing that is certain 
is that a well was dug there early in the 6th century BC, which probably collected water from a nearby brook and which was later covered by subsequent buildings. This ensured the supply of water, a crucial element for worship. A little further to the south, an altar of ash was established, similar to the one on Kinortian, and a small temple was built next to it. During the 5th century BC, the temple and altar were enclosed within a square set by two shallow colonnades and a plain wall, while an overground altar was built facing them. Findings in the Altar of Ash tell us that here were venerated both Apollo and Asclepius together. In the 4th century BC, this complex, conventionally named Building E, acquired a third, possibly double-decked colonnade along the plain wall on its south side, as well as a facade with a monumental gate. The year 375 BC saw the beginning of the ambitious monumental building construction project in the Asclepian. We know this program relatively well from inscriptions detailing the building's administrative and economic data. It began with Asclepius Temple in the south, the construction of which took five years. It was very close to the sacred well. The temple was built of sandstone, with six times twelve Doric columns in the peristyle and an interior Corinthian colonnade. It was decorated with marble sculptures on its pediments, depicting the sack of Troy and an Amazon fight, and had a marble acroteria, which were free-standing statues at the top and corners of the roof, depicting the statues of Nike and Nereids, created by great sculptors of the day, such as Timotheus. Before the temple, next to the entrance ramp, a bronze statue of the god stood on a pedestal that has survived to our time, depicting Asclepius holding a fiali that had water running from it. The building, which is called Aviton or Enkimitirion, closes the central sanctuary area from the north side. This 70-meter colonnade was the place where patients slept expecting Asclepius to come in their sleep to heal them or suggest a cure to them. This process was called incubation, enchimisi. The Aviton colonnade was constructed in the 4th century BC to replace a smaller archaic colonnade which was no longer sufficient for the crowds of pilgrims converging to the famous sanctuary in those days. The building had 31 ionic columns on the facade, with the top floor ones equipped with stone balustrades between them. From this it is clear that the colonnade was accessible only to those who participated in the mystery of miraculous healing. This was the meaning of the name Avaton, namely an area that could not be accessed, stepped upon by a non-accredited person. Only the sandstone foundations and small parts of the superstructure of the classical era Aviton have survived to this day. The building was probably destroyed by the destructive earthquake in the 6th century AC. The Tholos, a round building with a subterranean chamber, was built to the west of the Temple of Asclepius between 360-330 BC. It had Doric sandstone columns on the outside, and the entrance to the circular cella had a side frame that was splendidly and minutely decorated. 
In the interior, there was a marble Corinthian colonnade. The floor was made of elaborate alternating circular rows of black and white diamond-shaped flagstones, while the roof was decorated with panels bearing flowers of exceptional artistic quality. The roof with its marble tiles was crowned by an intricate floral acroterion. The Tholos building continues the attic tradition of making a small building imposing by exaggerating its architectural decor. It comprises the most perfect example of this trend. The building's architect was Polycletus of Argos. The building's three subterranean circular corridors communicated with openings and by placing barriers at the appropriate places, they forced the person entering to meander through it. The circular shape, which normally is a feature of Greek burial structures, as well as mimicking Hades' labyrinth areas, would suggest that the meaning of this building as one that housed the subterranean residents of Asclepius, who, according to the legend, healed through the earth. The Temple of Artemis, sister to Apollo, may also be considered as a key building of worship in the Asclepion. It was dedicated to her circa 330 BC and almost touches the south side of Building E. It was a peristyle temple with three Doric columns on the facade and its roof was decorated with dog and boar heads on the marble drains and Nike statues on the acroteria. Built on the side of Mount Kinortion, looking down into the sanctuary of Asclepius, is the best-known theatre of ancient Greece, the Epidaurus Theatre. It was built around the middle of the 4th century BC by architect Polycletus and is the best preserved monument in the archaeological site. It has a capacity of 12 to 14,000 spectators and has survived practically intact. The theatre is famous for its harmonious proportions, but mostly for its unique acoustics. This was where musical and theatrical events took place within the context of the celebrations held in honour of Asclepius. The Epidaurus Theatre hosts the Epidaurus Festival of Ancient Tragedy and Comedy, held in the summer months. Going from the theatre to the sanctuary, the first monument we encounter is the remains of the Katagogion, the largest building in the Asclepius sanctuary. 
It is a square building, each side 76 meters, internally divided into four squares, each of which had a central court surrounded by colonnades at the back of which there were rooms. The total number of rooms on both stories was 160. The Katagogion, which was one of the farthest away from the other buildings, was the sanctuary's guest house, the place where patients and their companions, as well as the crowds arriving at the Asclepion for the gods' big celebrations, could find lodgings. The Greek baths are at a fair distance from the ancient guest house. They were constructed at the beginning of the Hellenistic era in the 3rd century BC, namely the same time as the Katagogion and the large ritual restaurant which lies to their right. This balneal complex is in the shape of a quadrangle with a large court. Around the court, on its three sides, there are rectangular spaces with baths, basins and gutters for water drainage. The large, impressive building on the right of the Greek baths is the Ritual Restaurant. It comprises halls of different sizes around a central court which is framed by a row of Doric columns and was designated for ritualistic meals. Part of the worship involved ritual meals with the participation of all pilgrims. Plain bed supports have been found in some of the rooms. The complex dates from the end of the 4th century BC at a time when the sanctuary had reached a great development and needed space to accommodate the crowds that participated in the ritual meals. In the first century BC, a large part of the restaurant was destroyed by invading pirates. Several centuries later, in the 3rd century AD, a Roman Odeon was built in the internal court. Building material for its construction was used from the restaurant and other sanctuary buildings.
Of the seating arrangement, only nine badly damaged rows survive. They were made of fired clay tiles. The Odeon was the venue for mainly singing and dramatic events related to the ritual meals still going on at the ritual restaurant facility. The big square building of the Roman years to the north of the ritual restaurant is the sanctuary that Traveller Pausanias reports seeing. It was dedicated to the gods of Epidaurus that were worshipped here as Egyptian divinities. In an area such as the Roman one, when civilizations and religions became mixed, namely between the 2nd century BC and the 4th century AD, Apollo, Asclepius and Hiaea were correspondingly worshipped as Osiris, Horus and Isis, as both triads were related to the underworld, life-giving divine power. The sanctuary of the Egyptians had a large room with an initiation area, a second hippo-style room to the left, and a circular cleansing room with a bath for the priests to the right. Dominating the area across from the restaurant and the sanctuary of Egyptian gods is the stadium. During the Asclepia, the celebrations in honor of Asclepius, Besides the theatrical events, there were also athletic contests held. Just like in other sanctuaries, the athletic contests in Epidaurus were part of the worship. The Epidaurus Stadium was constructed in a natural hollow in the ground, which was suitably arranged for the athletes and the public. The track is a quadrangle 181.30 meters long and is surrounded by a sandstone gutter. The water draining through the gutter was useful both for the athletes and the spectators, but also served to carry rainwater off the track. During the Roman years, the sanctuary was rearranged with a perimeter colonnade which, using materials from destroyed buildings, enclosed the sacred square, the basic sanctuary buildings such as the Tholos and the Avaton, the temples of Artemis and Asclepius with their altars, building E and the ancient altar at its west. To the north of the sacred square was the Cotis Colonnade. This building was probably commercial rather than devotional. To the right of the Cotis Colonnade is the Aquaeus a complex of baths dating from the middle of the 2nd century AD. The word aquas comes from the Latin aqua, meaning waters. The existence and operation of baths in the sanctuary of antiquity's healer god is completely rational. One only has to consider the cleansing character of water. Aquas is one of the six known baths in the Asclepian area and one of the best preserved monuments in the site. The Roman sanctuary of the 2nd century BC, which is embedded in the Aquas baths complex to the right of the sacred square, is the sanctuary of the giver gods. Worshipped as givers, were gods that offered health, abundance, and happiness to the people. 
Within the sanctuary, there was a semicircular array of statues of worship of Asclepius and members of his family. Walking on the sacred way, which crosses the sacred square towards the north, at a distance of approximately 75 meters from the other buildings in the site, we come across the sanctuary's ancient entrance, the great Propylaea. The monumental structure with the big ramp at the center which was for entering ritual procession wagons emphasized the sacred area around 300 BC. Sections of the columns and the part of the Propylaea over them have been reconstructed and are currently on display in the Museum of Epidaurus.